Hello and thanks for using TickBoom. This video is uh, the second of what will be a four part series where I'm working through each part of the final question of the New South Wales Extension 2 Math Exam for 2020. So, you know, kind of well known as the hardest question of the hardest exam. Um, so this video follows on from part one where we just proved that i n equals 2n on 2n plus 1 times i n minus 1. So we demonstrated a recurrence relationship with the integral that we're, we're thinking about. Um, I kind of mentioned in that video that, that there was nothing particularly difficult um, in part one, which is true in a way, I think, apart from the need to be careful, um, there was no real out of the box thinking required. Um, but to be fair, I'm not working through this question in the context of an intense exam where I've just already done 15 questions and I'm under a time limit and I've had all the other pressures of the HSC on me, not to mention COVID happening the whole way through the year. So it's easy for me to say uh, in my situation that there was nothing particularly hard, um, but it might be a bit unfair to kind of evaluate the question from my perspective. Um, kind of, however hard it is for me, it's always gonna be a little bit harder for students doing this in the context of an exam. So that's probably worth keeping in mind. But I still think it's interesting to note that um, what you had to do for part one was fairly straightforward. Um, it may be that these remaining parts are where the tricky bits come in, um, we'll see. But um, so far so good on this question, I would say. So for part two, we need to deduce that i n equals two to the two n times n factorial squared on two n plus one factorial. And I think the key for this part is that word deduce. So we're, we're basically being told, use what you just proved in part one. And I think these proof questions that we come across where they're broken up into parts, the well-written ones at least are guiding you through so for each part, there's a reason that you're doing it. It's to help you with the next part. And that's definitely what we're seeing here. So I'll just write what we're trying to do here for part two. So we need to deduce that i n is equal to two to the two n times n factorial squared all over two n plus one factorial. And given we're told to deduce, uh, I think the, the natural place to start is what we showed in part one, which is that i n is equal to 2 n on 2 n plus one times i n minus one. And the beauty of a question like this is even if you couldn't do part one, even if you couldn't show that, you're almost starting from a clean slate here in part two you still may be able to get some marks here because you can take it as given now, even if you couldn't prove it. So that's the kind of exam tip. Even if you can't do part one in questions like this, still keep going because you may be able to nut out what the remaining parts are all about. Um, so from here, what we can do is we can take this i n minus one and write that in the same format because i n minus one would be equal to two and I'll just put n minus one anywhere that I see n. So we go n minus one over two n minus one plus one times i n minus two. And then we could say i n minus two is equal to two of n minus two over two n minus two plus one times i n minus three. And, and you could keep going all the way up to, until you run out really. So you get to I zero. And we're not going to be able to t talk about I zero in this format because um, um, this was for N greater than or equal to one. So we can't really use this format, but what we can do is go back to our original integral. Um, so we can know that I zero was equal to the integral from zero to pi on two of sine, it was 2n plus 1, so 2 times 0 plus 1 of 2 theta d theta, because that was for 0, 1, and so on. So we can use this for i0. 
So what that gives us is the integral from 0 to pi on 2, it just becomes sine 2 theta d theta. And that's actually something we, we worked out when we had to work through part 1. So we know that that's going to be um, negative a half of cos 2 theta between 0 and pi on 2. And so that will give us negative a half of cos 2 pi on 2, which is cos pi, um, minus cos 0. Um, cos pi is equal to negative 1, and cos 0 is equal to positive 1. So what we get is negative a half times negative 1 minus 1, which simplifies down to negative a half times negative 2 gets you to positive 1. So that's this kind of recurrence relationship. What we've done so far is we've expanded it out, showing each individual part all the way up to I0. So now what we can do is put it all, put it all back into one long sequence. So I'll turn over the page for that. But what we'll get to is we'll get to I n is equal to, first of all, it's our 2n on 2n plus 1 times, and instead of writing i n minus 1, I'll write this. So times 2n minus 1 over 2n minus 1 plus 1, which is really 2n minus 2 plus 1, or 2n minus 1. So... Uh, 2n minus 2 plus 1, yeah, 2n minus 1. And then instead of writing i n minus 2, I'll write times 2n minus 2 over 2n minus 4 plus 1, which would be 2n minus 3. And so on, all the way up to the final item, which is times 1. So that, that's really what we're dealing with here. So the question is, how can we get from here to here, which is what we're trying to ultimately deduce. So let's see. Um, first of all, we can take all of these twos. We can see that everything's kind of being multiplied by two n times, basically. So we can get two to the power of n times n n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way up to 1. And then on the denominator, um, what, we've, what we've got is 2n plus 1, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 3, and so on. And that will also then go up to 1. Now hopefully you can recognise this as simply n factorial. So what we've got here is, um, I'll leave what I've got on the denominator. So 2n plus 1, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 3, and so on, up to 1. But on the numerator now, we've got basically 2 to the n times n factorial. Now, I am well, what we need to work towards is this 2n plus 1 factorial. And on this denominator, we're, we're kind of half of the way there because what we need here is a 2n plus 0, here we'd need a 2n minus 2, here we'd need a 2n minus 4, here we'd need a, a 2 and so on. So if I want to put those into the denominator I just need to put them into the numerator as well so that I haven't changed anything. So we get 2 to the n times n factorial times 2n plus 0, and I know I don't need to write the plus 0, but I will just because it, it might be helpful. 2n minus 2, 2n minus 4, and so on, all the way up to 2. They're all the things I need to put up the top. And now I'll write 2n plus 1, 2n plus 0, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 2, 2n minus 3, and so on, all the way up to times 2 times 1. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. Now, 
in terms of what we can do to the numerator, this will be 2 to the n times n factorial, and I can factor out the 2 in each of these items. So we get 2 times just basically n times 2 n minus 1 times 2 n minus 2, so on, times 2 times 1. And all of that will be over what we can now see as 2n plus 1 factorial. So we're getting close. Now what we can do is we've got our 2 to the n times n factorial. We, we get another n 2s, so we can say 2 to the n again. And what we're left with is is essentially what we started with, n, n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way up to 1, which is also n factorial over 2n plus 1 factorial. And now we can just bring these 2, two to the n's together, which will get us 2 to the power of 2n, n factorial squared, because we've got n factorial times n factorial, all over 2n plus 1 factorial. And that, I believe, is what we had to show. So that's part two done. Um, I think the key to that question is just taking the hint that they're giving you, deduce. So whenever you get a, a recurring sequence like the one we showed in part one, I think a, a kind of thing always worth trying is to write out each item in terms of its item before until you get to its natural conclusion. Um, that can be a useful technique for trying to do proofs like this. Um, I think in our case, again, we've been somewhat lucky in that I don't think there was anything in any of these steps that were particularly um, challenging in terms of out-of-the-box thinking required. Um, I guess here, the, the, where, where people may have gotten stuck is in this step here where you kind of had to see that you were missing some items and just multiply top and bottom. I can imagine there'd be plenty of students who might kind of not think to do that and, and that's where you may get stuck. But um, if you've had enough practice with these kind of proofs, hopefully that's a technique that would jump out at you. Because from there, all you really need to know is the definition of n factorial, which is something um, you would have learned quite a long time ago if you're studying for unit. So um, there you have it. Again, I'd say for this um, question, so far, so good. So in the next video, uh, we'll take a look at part three and we'll see um, what, what that's going to require us to do. Uh, yeah, tick boom.